Rebecca Poplin. This is my veterinary radiology AVMA task video. I'm going to talk to you a bit about radiation safety, starting with this. This is a dosimeter badge, and it, exposure, it measures exposure to radiation with a sensitive film that's inside the badge. We mail it off to a company that reads the exposure, and we get those reports uh, quarterly. We should wear it anytime we're taking x-rays or assisting with x-rays, and it should be worn at the level of the thyroid. And the maximum permissible dose of radiation annually for veterinary staff members is 5 rem. I have a report here where we can see, um, I'll pick a staff member here, Amanda. She has, we have the report here, 12 millirem for deep. 13 for I and 13 for shallow. So that's all millirem. And I know that she's under the permissible dose because we have a reference page that comes with our report. And it, it allows us to know what the Alara notification threshold levels are. Um, and for deep I and shallow, that's 1250, 3750, and 12,500. Um, and that's at level one. And so again, this is much lower than um, what our permissible doses would be. You will see my PPE worn in my videos. Um, it shows what we have available, which is um, lead aprons, the thyroid collars, lead gloves. Um, some clinics also have eyewear protection available. So radiation safety in general, um, there's three methods of restraint used in radiology. That would be chemical restraint, which is ideal, which is a sedated patient, which allows you to have the most distance between you and your, your beam. Um, there's also, you can restrain using aids, so like bean bags and tape and things like that, and that allows you to get a bit of distance. There's also manual restraint which is holding the animal in position while you're taking the radiographs. Um, three positioning aids that I've used, you'll see in the video. I used a bean bag, tape, um, and also a trough to help hold the patient in position. So um, physical barriers that can be used in a radiology suite. We've got uh, lead lined walls. Um, you, if you have a sedated patient, you can have them in the primary beam while you're stepping on the pedal to take the image while you're behind the wall, that is another level of protection that you can have. Distance and exposure time can be utilized as safety measures. Distance means your, your distance from the beam, um, and then the time is, you want to minimize the time that you're exposed, um, that your patient is exposed. So no portion of any human shielded or unshielded should ever be in the primary beam, and that is because of the risk of radiation exposure. It's cumulative in nature, so um, we want to avoid it at all cost. How it can injure you is it can kill cells, it can damage them, it can damage DNA, um, and cause cancers and, and radiation burns and really serious things like that. Non-essential personnel should be removed out of the x-ray room because if there's no reason that they need to be in there while the, the radiation is happening, then we need to get them out. It's not going to do us any good to have them in there, and it really is just uh, reducing our risk. That's uh, another reason why we make uh, every effort to obtain diagnostic images the first time, is again reducing the time that we have ourselves and the patient exposed to the radiation. And uh, pregnant women and people under 18, they need to have restrictions. Um, no one under 18 should be in the x-ray room, and pregnant women should discuss the risk of radiation with their physicians. That's because radiation can target dividing cells. So the first trimester of pregnancy is a super vulnerable period to be exposed to radiation. And someone young who's still growing, the, the growth centers in their bones, um, they're they just need to stay out of the, uh, the radiation. So the PPE that we have available, uh, we have lead aprons. We also have thyroid collars and lead gloves and, of course, the dosimetry badge. Um, so what we do is inspect the PPE before we put it on. We're looking for cracks. 
um, anything that would indicate that maybe it's been bitten through or somehow compromised. Um, and like on this glove, I can see a, a bite mark. It looks like somebody got a hold of that. Um, we also check our aprons the same way. We store them hanging up so we don't crease them. Um, and we put it on, secure it around the neck, ties around the waist. The thyroid collar goes around the neck. The dosimeter badge gets attached at the level of the thyroid. And the lead gloves go on like so.